we're going to receive communion today differently than we've ever done it before uh, and in a way to try to make everybody comfortable with it. The bread is in little cups. This is all sanitized. Mel put it all together wearing a mask and gloves. The bread is in a little cup. Uh, your juice is in a little cup. The bread is a little bigger than you usually get, but you got more juice. And Kathy and I are going to step down here near the piano. And we'd like for you to come around the side there and come by and pick up your bread and your cup. And then if you want to, you can spend some time at the altar or you can take it back to your seat, whatever you're comfortable with. But we've tried to do, put this together in such a way that uh, everybody can be comfortable with what's going on and uh, leaving it covered up so I'm not speaking over it and uh, give you an opportunity. We haven't had communion in months and I've been missing it. And I sent BJ to get a trash bag I meant to bring. Uh, but there'll be a trash bag that, back there at the back. Uh, just keep, keep your cups until the service is over and put them all in that one trash bag instead of having them scattered about everywhere with everybody's different germs on them. So we'll try to do it as neatly and as sanitary as we can. Um. You had wise men coming from all over the place. And they followed that star. And the star finally rested over Bethlehem. Well, how did a wise man coming from over here and a wise man coming over here see that same star leading them in two different directions to the same place? God's a good astronomer, isn't he? He's got those things figured out. You can really think about some of these things if you will uh, give yourself a chance to do so. Uh, <clears throat> as we enter into our prayer time, you'll see that, uh, I don't know how much you might have talked about it last week, Carl Berg's mother died on Christmas morning, and uh, so they've if they haven't left yet, they will be leaving shortly to go to Florida for the uh, service down there. Uh, are there any others we need to add to our list or any updates on any of th we have on our list? Ronnie? Good, good. It's good that she's doing so well. Goodness, because it's a lot rougher on older people sometimes. Good, good. That's a, at the same time a concerning report, but a good report. As a coach. Are you still going to teach? Okay. If they want you. <laughs> that is a big load off your back, though, isn't it? Being a head coach at a good sized school is a job, that's a lot of work. Did you say? Okay, Martha Toll, 
uh, one of Kathy's friends up in New Hampshire. Do they live near you, live near the lake up there? Yeah, it's, we were part of, when we were younger, we were all part of a close group of friends. Anyone else? Anything else? Oh, man, I didn't know that. She passed away yesterday from uh, COVID. COVID complications. But that family, his brother died about six months ago. His brother and I were in the same class. Was Jeep in your class? Was Jeep in your class? No, he was uh, younger than I. Okay. Jeep Farable. Anyone else? Anyone else or anything else? If not, then let's go to the Lord in prayer and we'll start with a time of silent prayer. Then we'll continue. So let's pray. Heavenly Father, we've come this morning to worship you. We've come to seek your face, Lord. I pray, Lord, that you would show us a glimpse of your glory as we're here this morning, as we receive Holy Communion in the face of all that's going on in the world. We can come to the table. We can receive the elements. We can know, Lord, that as we worship you, you watch over us. So many things going on, so many different instructions and so many different cautions and so many different ideas about how to do everything. Lord, I pray you would show us the way. Give us the direction we need. Give us the strength, Lord, to depend on you for that. And the wisdom, Father, to use your wisdom in the face of all that's going on. Lord, I pray that as we gather here today, our prayers will be heard by you, each and every one as they always are. Our worship would be felt by you, and as we sing, may be a pleasing sound in your ear, Father. Lord, we have our prayer list that we lift up to you and ask you to be in each of these situations. Let them sense your presence, Lord. Let them know that you are there, that you are with them, that you are strengthening them and giving them the peace that they need in the face of whatever is going on. Lord, I thank you for all those that are gathered here and the ones who didn't come for various reasons. Some don't need to be getting out in the world today. We need to be aware of those, Father, and help them in ways, any way we can. Let us remember you, Father, and glorify you with our lives, with our work, with all we say and do. Keep your hand on our country, Lord. Lead us in the right direction. Cause our leadership to make the right decisions, Father. Lord, I give you all the praise and the glory in Jesus' precious name. Most of all, we thank you for your son, Jesus. We thank you for what he did for us on the cross. We thank you for the salvation he's brought us through the resurrection. Lord, we thank you as we come to the table today that we are reminded to do this in remembrance of him. And Lord, I pray you hear our prayers now as we pray together, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. 
and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Our scripture this morning, Corinthians chapter 11, verses 23 through 26. Uh, in the Pew Bibles on page 812 and in the larger version, 1151. For I have received from the Lord what I also passed on to you. The Lord, the Lord Jesus, on the night he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup, saying, This is the cup, the new covenant in my blood. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. The word of God for the people of God. <clears throat> my mic has been iffy today for some reason. Sounds okay right now, does it? Okay. Uh, told BJ the whole thing is about communion, and it is. It's been so long since we were together for communion. I left one word off the title of the sermon in the bulletin. It should say, together again at the altar, finally. Uh, finally. You can see we've got it set up differently today. Some came in after I gave the instructions. Uh, Kathy and I will stand over here and serve communion to you and we'll come down outside the pews next to the wall and once you receive your cup of bread and your cup of juice, you can either go to the altar for a period or you can take it back to your pew and sit and pray or whatever you might do. But uh, that time at the altar is available to you. Uh, Mel prepared these sanitarily with gloves and masks and we've got them covered. And so we're trying to do this so that everybody is, is as comfortable as possible with what's going on. And it's been so long since we did this. It's months, months. And, and, uh, I, did, I just wanted us to have the opportunity to take our time as we're going through this. Communion is very special to me. As a pastor, this is the most favorite thing I do, serving communion to you. Um, weddings are okay. Funerals are okay. Weddings have really gotten so big and <clears throat> that uh, sometimes I tell people jokingly, if it wasn't for the dead person, I'd rather do a funeral than a wedding. But <clears throat> communion stays the same in my eyes. We have the opportunity to go through the liturgy and to focus ourselves on what Christ did for us on that evening. You've heard these words before, but I think they bear repeating that on the night he gave himself up for us, Jesus knew what was coming. He knew the future. He knew what was going to be happening to him. He knew that the soldiers were probably being formed up as they ate their last supper, what we've come to know as the last supper. He knew that he didn't have much time left. He knew that one of his followers, one of his close friends at the table would betray him. We, uh, in the book, we're studying the shack We've studied, we've discussed a lot within the last couple of weeks about how Jesus limited himself as a human. He limited himself in uh, various ways, but in this instance, he knew exactly what was going on. 
He knew the cross was ahead of him. He dreaded the moment when as he hung on the cross, all the sins of the world were placed on his shoulders. That was what he dreaded about the evening. Not the nails, not the scourging, not the thorns. He knew that shortly they would be leaving the upper room where they were and would be going across the Kidron Valley and crossing this little footbridge that crosses a ditch that comes out of the city of Jerusalem. And in that ditch flowed blood of all the sheep and goats and birds or whatever were sacrificed on the Day of Atonement, uh, um, I mean of Passover. And I'm always struck by that picture of the Lamb of God walking across that bridge that crossed the blood that was flowing from all the other sacrifices when he alone was the only sacrifice that was needed. And he knew when he got to the Garden of Gethsemane that he would be praying. He would pray for himself that he would do God's will and he would bring glory and honor to God the Father. He prayed for his disciples because he knew when he left that they would come under fire, so to speak. They would be the ones that would be hunted down, literally. And he prayed for us. He prayed for all the believers who believed through the word of the disciples as they wrote the letters in the Bible. With all that in mind, knowing that he would be leaving earth shortly after his crucifixion. With all of that in mind, he thought the most important thing he could do for his friends was this, was this last supper he served or he ate with them. And during that time, he took the bread and gave it to them to represent his body. Gave them the wine to represent his blood. And he said, do this in remembrance of me. If you will, take out your hymnal. Turn to page 12. <clears throat> see any strangers today so there's no reason to emphasize the fact that everyone is welcome because all of you know that you are. We're on page 12 and the invitation begins, Christ our Lord invites to his table all who love him, who earnestly repent of their sin, who seek to live in peace with one another. Jesus is at this, at this moment fulfilling Matthew eleven twenty eight, 28 where he says, Come to me, all who are weary and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. He's saying, Come, let rest in me. Find your rest in me. With that in mind, therefore, let us confess our sin before God and one another. Merciful God, we confess that we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have failed to be an obedient church. We have not done your will. We have broken your law. We have rebelled against your love. We have not loved our neighbors. We have not heard the cry of the need. Forgive us, we pray. Free us for joyful obedience through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Hear the good news. Christ died for us while we were yet sinners. That fulfills Romans 5, 8, which says, But God demonstrates his own love for us in this. While we were sinners, Christ died. That proves God's love toward us. In the name of Jesus Christ, 
you are forgiven. Glory to God. Amen. And in the great thanksgiving, the Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to do our best and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. And so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn, Holy, 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 Holy Lord, God of power and might. Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You know, I just wonder if... Revelation 4.8 is fulfilled every time we say that. Revelation 4.8 says, Each of the four living creatures had six wings and was covered with eyes all around. Day and night they never stopped saying, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty, who was and is and is to come. I wonder as we proclaim, Holy, holy, holy Lord, if they were singing in unison with us. I can see God planning things that way. I can see that happening. The liturgy goes on to say, Holy are you and blessed is your son Jesus Christ. By the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by the water and the Spirit. People, we are the new covenant. We live under the new covenant. That night when Jesus served this meal, he was making a covenant with us that we could live under and live by. On that night in which he took himself up for us, gave himself up for us, he took the bread, he gave thanks and broke it, Heavenly Father, bless this bread. May it be nourishment to our souls. In Christ's name I pray. And when the supper was over, he took the cup, gave thanks to you. Heavenly Father, thank you for this cup of life. May it be nourishment to our souls. And he gave it to them and he said, drink this, all of you. This is my blood given to you in the new covenant. We are new covenant people. We are Christ's holy people. We are his sons. That's what he tells us. I know it's hard to believe sometimes, but that's what he tells us. We are new covenant people. And so... In remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as holy and living sacrifices in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ is dying. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here, Lord, and on these gifts of bread and wine, Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ, that we may be for the world the body of Christ, redeemed by his blood. By your spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in the Holy Church, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. There's a lot that goes on with Holy Communion. The bread, the cup, 
how we approach it individually, spiritually. Sometimes you can get lost in the mechanics of it. Sometimes you can get lost in the theology of it. But the great Swiss theologian, Karl Barth, was asked what, his mo what the most profound thought he had found in existentialism. And he thought for a few minutes. And he said, Jesus loves me, this I know, for the Bible tells me so. It's that simple. Christ loved us so much that on the night he was arrested, he thought this was the most important thing he could do. And now we have it for us. As I said, Kathy will have the bread over here. I'll have the cup. Come down the side. Take yours. You may stay at the altar as long as you wish or you may go back to your seat. And BJ and Xander will have the trash bags back there in the back and you can leave your cups as you leave today. As you will see, Mel was expecting a lot more people today. And I noticed something distinctly. Bill, how does it feel to look up at your son now? <laughs> you can't even get up there on your toes. I'm so glad you are here today. I'm so glad in the face of everything else, we can laugh. Father, be with us as we leave this place. Keep us ever mindful of your presence in our lives. Keep us mindful of, of your un Lord, of your unconditional love and your amazing grace. In Christ's name I pray. Amen. Go in peace. <laughs>